A lot of people don't talk about this. They perform and it looks like nothing's wrong. But a lot of people are actually very, very nervous. Dealing with stress on stage, actually handling stress and anxiety. Let's get into that today. Let's do it right now. Hey, what's up? I'm in the location and thank you for checking out yet another video. Now, if this is your first time here, don't hesitate to click subscribe, hit that notification bell because whenever I upload a new video, you'll be kept in the loop and you'll not miss out on anything. Stick around till the end of this video. I'll tell you all about Discord, Patreon, the Mixer project. I'll tell you who my new patron is. I'll tell you about the Kitchen Club and I will tell you on what's new and what's happening. So stick around. Music you'll find on Bandcamp. There's a lot of unreleased stuff on there, so go and do check that out. Not everything I produce on the video is going to end up on Bandcamp, but most of the tracks that I think like, you know what, I'm not going to release them, or I just think like, you uh, can have access to them, you can find them there. So Bandcamp, go and do check that out as well. Now, I don't understand why this is not a more spoken about, talked about topic on this um, electronic dance music sort of thing because I don't understand why nobody talks about it. I've been on stage, I think I've done close to five to six thousand performances in my career and the thing I'm going to tell you now is something that not a lot of people know about me but you know I never ever feel 100% comfortable walking onto a stage. Um, it always goes well and after so many performances chances are I'm not going to screw up but just walking to that stage or thinking about a performance, it's not the easiest thing in the world. It does give me a lot of stress. It gives me stress because I think there's a few things that you need to take into consideration. The thing is, I always try to do the best that I can, but it's a control situation. I'm trying to just control a situation that I cannot control. Um, most of what I try to do is for, a, for the chosen few. You have to understand or be in this business for as long as I have to understand really what's happening. If I'm twisting knobs and you're on the dance floor, chances are you don't care. You just want the music to be good. But in my mind though, it's a big thing. Now, there's a few things that I have done over the years uh, on my career, in my career to figure out how to deal with the stress. Just the sheer um, panic that I had just having to perform uh, in front of Carl Cox or in front of like a Paul Okafor or in front of Sasha or Dickweed or whatever. Whenever there was a big name DJ around me, I was like convinced I would put on a record and the club would collapse or the sound system would break down or everybody would just like melt away like zombies and go, you know, like, uh, I don't know. In your brain, it becomes a much bigger thing. Now, there's a few things that I have done on my life set now to make life a little bit easier. I don't think that you can eliminate the stress completely, but a little bit of jitters is, is okay. It keeps you on your toes, so to speak, but anxiety and getting to a point where you just don't perform or you're just outright just like scared to do it, I think you can overcome that. But I think that for one, um, embrace the fact that you are somebody that wants to do a perfect job, but then perfect does not exist, right? In the end of the day. Um, then the second thing you really, really need to just like take into account is that the crowd is more forgiving than you would ever think. They will forgive you as long as if you're a really, a truly a genuine performer, right? If you're just standing there and you're chewing bubble gum and you look like you don't give a shit, then obviously you can expect the crowd to give a shit about your performance as well, right? So, but if you're there and 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 you you. You're, you're being vulnerable. You're showing the world that you don't really know what's going on. With a live set, a dollar's live set, you don't know. You know for a, for a big portion of the show, but the best things happen when you don't know and the crowd doesn't know. Nobody knows what's happening. You're playing a note and all of a sudden it's like, ah, amazing. So, get yourself in a position where you can actually um, improvise a little bit within brackets. So, bite-sized chunks is the next one I would like to talk about. Don't overestimate what it is that you are going to do. A big portion of stress is gas related. You buy that synth on Friday, you perform it on Saturday, leave that shit in the box, man. Don't bring it onto the stage. If you don't know what it does for 100% completely already, why bring it, you know? And that, having said that, master your gear. 
So if there's three boxes that you know, don't bring five, bring two. So you know you've got options. And those are perhaps maybe uh, uh, cliches and open door kind of, kind of um, uh, routines, but they do help. They do help you out. Another thing is to not take yourself too seriously because in the end of the day, when you are in this sound design, performing, sequencing type of like IT type business, this is what we are, we are programming these little robots, uh, you have to understand that it doesn't really, the crowd don't, doesn't care about it, you know? So if a sound is almost there, uh, the 8% to 10% it's not going to make a difference. You know, it, the, the, the performance is, is what makes the difference. Now, what I have also done is there are a few things that I know that I can perform or I can stick out in the room that will always work. They'll work regardless of what's happening. So it will give me time to um, get accustomed, accustomed to the sound, to the sound system, to how people react to it. And um, keep in mind that you have some headroom, headspace to think on X factors in the room. You know, if there's uh, a bigger guy to girl ratio, or a bigger girl to guy ratio, or a, a, a bigger uh, straight to, to, to gay or to whatever ratio, or there's a, which type of drugs uh, are involved, or whether it's a daytime event, nighttime event, whether there's alcohol, whether there's no alcohol, whether there's so many different aspects that can change the, the, the course of the expectancy or the flow of the room. So if you go in with a set sort of like plan, like this is it and that's going to be it, chances are you're going to fail, right? And the more stress you get, the more you're going to most likely make uh, decisions that you cannot like, you know, you, can, you have to rely on yourself and try stuff out. Now, a few things that I also did was perform in front of my friends, perform in a living room setup. Bring a small skeleton setup. I basically did it at after parties where there was a lot of people already like like in blissed out in the moment. So they didn't really care what was going on as long as the music <laughs> kept on playing. So yeah, I made use of that and I played uh, my tunes and tried something out, stuff that I didn't want to try out on stage. Um, and then there's in my mind, there is a, a sort of like step a hierarchy on what I think uh, where the risks should be taken. So if I'm playing a big, room and I'm headlining and, and you know most definitely I probably would not like to just try out stuff that I just literally just like loaded up or programmed the day before if I'm not 100% convinced um, and the best uh, thing I can give you today on the uh, speaking side of things so I'm going to talk a lot about my philosophy on how I work it then I'm going to take you to my life set and I will uh, dive into what are those things exactly specifically but that's coming up in a second um, the most important thing is a crowd. So where you think that you're in control, it's pretty much if you uh, are making a performance, you perform for people, but it's a joint venture. You're, you're trying to build a community. That's what I always do. Uh, I'm trying to build a community. I'm trying to just like get my point across to the people out there because they're receiving the, what I'm trying to give them. And in turn, uh, if they like it, if you like what I'm throwing out there, you're going to give that energy back to me. And then there's this circle, circle that evolves and evolves. And then, then, it doesn't really matter where it go, whether it's going. We're, we're all flying the same uh, uh, UFO. We're all going in the same direction. Uh, it's what the aim should be. That's how I uh, was working. If we could get into a little bit of science fiction uh, terminology here. Okay, now speaking of um, uh, communities, um, my Patreon page uh, connected to Discord actually is vibrant there's a lot of new people there there's a lot of people talking about this stuff exactly this topic has not come up uh, as a topic but i hear a lot of people say i'm not sure if i'm ready to perform yet that's what i kept hearing and over the last weeks i kept hearing it so much that i thought i need to do a video on this because this is what's keeping a lot of people off stage and i think a lot of people are making excellent music but they're just like um not convinced enough that they can actually do it and i pushed a lot of people off the cliff uh under my guidance of course and i've told them you need to just make that leap and once they've done it they can all say like why did i not do it earlier i mean if you live to be a 500 year old person no problem take all the time you have since i don't think that's going to happen in this lifetime why not take the plunge now you buy all that expensive equipment you take the learning curve if you've got electron gear you know exactly what i'm talking about it takes a while to get the hang of that stuff and the best 
part of us as a social uh, sort of like a community, you know, community-based people. We, we thrive when we are uh, with each other. The best thing is to perform for people or with people or whatever you want to call it. Now, that's my two cents on this uh, portion of the video. And if you're ready, I will go over specific things that you can do to make your life easier on stage, dealing with stress and anxiety. Because, um, and again, I say it again, um, I look confident on stage. Most of the time people think like he knows what he's talking about because he's been in this game for such a long time. I literally my pants every time I need to get out there and it's even worse when it's a smaller crowd for some reason I don't know what it is um, and but I'm at a point where I'm just I'm getting to terms with it you know this is what it is I think that that's it uh, and sometimes you need to just well, most of the time I think you need to pay a little bit to the industry to take from the industry so if that means that uh, the stress factor and the the, the, the goose bumpiness and the whew, you know the, 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 all that that, that 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 stuff that you don't really like if that's the, 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 the price you have to pay in order to gain a lot of information then I do think okay you know what I mean it keeps me on my toes um, and um, yeah and it seems to work out well now um, tomorrow if you're watching the premiere of this video, I've got three analog kitchen gigs. Three gigs, three times I'm performing and then there's another DJ gig that I have to do in between. So it's a really crazy uh, summer day where everything is happening. So that's why uh, I got a new fly case, um, uh, courtesy of my mate. So we've uh, hooked it up and uh, it looks absolutely amazing. We still have to just like uh, swap stuff out and, ch and, and finalize it, but hmm looks amazing so that's also a new thing now if not anything else because i do think i've been going on for a while now okay uh, we're going to go to the live set i will uh, definitely show you on things to, how to deal with stress on stage um how do you work this into a live set obviously because um we spoke about how um anxiety can get the better of you and how to deal with it uh anxiety or um yeah, let's start with the basic, uh, um, like, elephant in the room. Uh, what helps is to feel confident about your gear. So when you show up and it's a mismatch of all kind of things, that doesn't work. So um, I started to get a little bit uh, stressy because I constantly had to uh, focus on getting my gear, uh, not losing any cables. So, yeah, finally, you know, um, I've got a flat case, a smaller one, as you can see. Uh, and this small uh, form factor uh, case is... Um, Absolutely amazing, actually. So it slides because uh, you do your sound check and then there you go, you know? Close it off, bam, done. Um, there's a, yeah, what is it? You know, for lack of a better explanation, I would say there is a uh, laptop stand on top of it, but uh, the subsequent uh, graces it. So I'll just go up and get the subsequent sorted. I think that that's that. Yeah, so subsequent here. This goes in a different fly case, but then I've, um, um, this is one big stress relieving um, situation to not having to connect your gear constantly. So uh, a box of some sort with just the gear that you're going to use, that's one, you know? Cable everything up, wire it up as, as cleverly as you can. This is snug in the box, as you can see, I can't move it. I'll just stuck everything uh, into this uh, uh, thing. We're still going to get it uh, flight ready though. But I think it's it's cool. Now, what I have is the Octatrack, the MPC Lite. Um, there is a uh, MIDI fighter over here, and then there's a 1010 black box, and obviously the subsequent 37. This, to me, is a skeleton setup. Why is it a skeleton setup? <coughs> because <coughs> I use, excuse me, <coughs> I used to bring so much more gear. But at some point, I, th I said, like, you know, I will not bring any more. You know, this is it. I will just um, uh, opt to just make another case. I stick it next to it, you know? So I'll just literally bring this in a fly case if I cannot rent it somewhere. Um, this will go with me, if, but usually the club or venue has a mixer um, and the stuff that they, you, that's really personal. So this kind of stuff, that's in the box. You can take it everywhere, just place it in front of you. I'll just make sure that that works. So that's stress relieving number one. Now, in terms of workflow, um, I will play a track. I will just go over why I chose the sounds that I did uh, because the whole thing for me is to eliminate stress and eliminate stuff that can go wrong, basically. Because if, if I've got a feeling that things are going to go wrong, that's when I uh, start to panic. Um, so um, I have got um, some clips 
on the black box that I can fire off so I know that the music is something that is going to be pretty static. Uh, because if I'm going into a certain routine, the crowd is going to a certain routine, and it gives me room to just focus on different things. So some things need to be live, obviously. But other things don't have to be live per se, or uh, can be played uh, ahead of time. So uh, there is a big debate on the dollars, uh, in the dollars community on how much life should be life, what is dollars, what's not dollars, and everybody's just going overboard on that. As, uh, when you're DJ, you're just playing somebody else's record. When you're completely 100% dollars, you're doing um, uh, the live thing, but I'd like to be hybridly, somewhere in the middle. So obviously I've got my um, um, music sorted out because I want you to recognize stuff that I'm releasing or whatever, so that's my approach. Now, what I have, as you can see, a sequencer is running. The MPC-1 is connected to the uh, Octatrack. There is a trick where you, and I'll go over it now, I have not connected it by the way, but what you would do is um, you tell the Octatrack uh, in the sync page here, um, you'll tell it uh, to receive MIDI sync and everything and the program chain stuff, it needs to receive that. Yeah, so it's now off. Uh, let's turn it on. Yes, pretty much. And then you have to set uh, a MIDI channel for this um, machine, yeah? So uh, you can see, you can tell the the, uh, the Octatrack what what uh, MIDI channel it needs to be. So the auto channel here is 16, um, which means that on channel 16, it's it it comes up as uh, channel 16 on the MPC one. Now when you get to the MPC one, what you would do is you'll create a track just like you do anything else. This is the sub sequence. So I'll call this sub quick fast. Yeah, it's another thing to really stress is to be organized. So if you've got a, uh, a track here. Um, just name it quick fast name it and save it so you know you don't have to go like oh what was it again you know a lot of people just like to just like go off into uh, oblivion within their creativity or they just don't organize themselves a big portion for me i can be very unorganized um uh, but when it comes to this stuff i'd like to just live really really like be tidy as i can so that i know where i can find stuff Second track, this is another MIDI track then. So here it says uh, subsequent, uh, there, MOOC sub 37 MIDI. That means that it's connected through the USB. It's got a hop sitting in the back. Then on channel two, what I would do is I would go and just go to the regular MIDI ports with MPC on this one. If you get an MPC live, obviously you get like MPC A, MPC B, you get two uh, MIDI out, two MIDI ins. I've got the single MIDI in, and now I will connect this to MIDI channel 16. This means, now this is now going to be a channel dedicated to the Octatrack. I'll call this channel Octa, right? Do it now. Then you'll go to your menu page and then you go to the list editor. Now this is where it becomes important. You need to make two entries in here. One on the first measure, one on the second measure. So the first one, let me just stop this quick fast. Um, you can um, enter, insert notes. So you go here, this should be then one, yeah, insert note. The notes uh, you can insert here needs to be 35. And basically there are three commands that the Octatrack listens to. Start, reset, um, start, stop, and uh, something in order. Uh, I'll play something on the screen so you can see what it is because uh, I'm literally just like doing this very impromptu. But anyway, the first of the measure is 35. Yeah, do it, boom. So now it says 35, okay? you make another one, which is on the last of the measure. The last of the measure meaning 9.9 point something. When we go out of there, you see I've got like a, uh, let's place this back to 16, do it. Um, I've got eight bars, so it means that it runs from one to nine. Eight bars meaning eight, two, three, four, boom. The next one would be nine, right? So going up here, uh, so we'll go back to menu, list edit. I'll say uh, insert another one. Now I can go all the way up here, can I? Uh, yes, I can. Scroll, 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 scroll. Yeah, are you crazy? You're gonna go uh, one. Uh, uh, I'm so fucking happy. Uh, do it. And then I'll say nudge. Because see, 9.1. Ah, God damn it. All right, so I got it down. So the one. And this one needs to be, going over here, we're going to edit this one. Uh, this is going to be 
34, yeah? So 34, so what happens is, if you wanna, um, um, and that will okay, go out, and save, right? Now, what's happening? Uh, usually, now, if I'm not mistaken, I can now, um, with program change, access my patterns here, which is very important if you want to switch. So going in here with the bank, let's see if I am correct. Yay, look, now bank two is I, this A. So this is A1, right? Program change, A2, A3, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's all nice and dandy. I think you figured it out. But once you play a sequence and you want to switch to another sequence here, this usually gets the program changed late. So it will play and it will run. Then, usually, are you running? Yes, you are. Okay, but now it's going to be on a different uh, thing. Okay, let's go. So here. Go to switch. One, two, three, four. Bam, there you go, see? You need to stop for a second. I'll just turn you off. Okay. Okay, I've got another sequence. Let's go and play another sequence here. Watch this bar. Two, three, four, four, five, seven, Eight. And now it's a switch on. Bam. See? It instantly switched to the next one. Bam, 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 bam. Let's do it again. Five, six, seven. I change it. Eight, two, three, switch. Bam. There you go. Now, usually this takes like forever to happen, right? So it takes like, in this case, four or 64 steps before it jumps to another sort of like thing. Ah, okay, cool. This is another trick that helped me relieve stress. Why? Because I want to go into a different song here because all the sequences coming from the subsequent are, are being handled by the MPC. Can you not uh, connect the subsequent to the 37? Yes, you can. But I've got the MIDI out already routed to the black box uh, and I didn't want to split up the MIDI for one. Second, the MIDI sequencing on this one is not as, um, yeah, it's not as good as the MPC-1. I think the MPC-1 is an absolutely amazing machine when it comes to MIDI. It's like amazing. Okay, I deafened myself here. Um, but it's amazing with what you can do and how you can actually work it. So I opted to go with the MPC to make that work. So this goes here. If I want to play different tracks with the uh, USB um, uh, side of things, I'll just uh, stick my mini tower maybe or whatever. I'll stick it on here and then you'll just go in here, as I said. So, and then change it and you'll find it and then you play your stuff. And, but you want this thing if you're playing like one key and you're going to another key, you want this. If you've got total information also in your architect, you want that to switch in time. So this is the trick to do it. Somebody asked me about it a few weeks ago. This is what it is. Okay, now moving on. Um, this is just drums, basically. I've got my Octatrack wired up to play drums. Um, but now we're on A1, so we're going to go to button 4, are we not? Yes, we're going to go to button 4. Button 4 is that, which means that here it is... Okay, let's turn this off quick fast, because now it's constantly going... This is as simple as this. You don't want this thing to happen, just mute it. So now it's going to leave it alone, because for now we're not doing any uh, song set structures. We're just basically going to get in what ingredients to use in order to just like deal with stress, right? That's what we're doing. Bank 4, 1, playing it. Exactly, that's where we are right now. So what I have done is I've got this track. This is what's more, what's more of a triplet kind of vibe, a triplet kind of vibe. I love this track. It's really turning it uh, out into something, but I, I'm not sure where it's going. So I've got uh, some things worked away on the black box so that I know that if I'm playing it from the black box, uh, it will work. Now, what have I got? Let's play uh, what I have so far. I'll go to my track one. That's where the subsequent is. There's no known information, as you can see. It's connected to the, I've got the uh, the subsequent going into the Octatrack and on a separate output, I'm going out of the uh, queue out and routing it separately to the desk. I don't want to sum it up in here. So it's going through um, um, the um, Octatrack because then I can mute it on the quick mute page. Now let's play what I have, right? So if I'm starting this, 
this is now definitely going to start as you saw. But in turn, because this is connected, uh, the black box connected to the octopack, pack, it will start as well. So you will see everything moving in the top corner there. That's the blue box running. You can make it out. I don't think you can make it out. Let's... Well. Uh, are you still playing a program change? Why are you playing a program change? I told you specifically not to play that program change. Okay, and then we're gonna go B. Then we're going to do it like this. B, B. Bam. There you go. So, it is still playing. So now it's going to stick on this. This is what I have. Got a track. Um, I wanted to do something different instead of the one, two, three, four. I have like a different kind of vibe going. Um, yeah, so. The kick is always going to be on my channel one on the octave track. Very important because it's muscle memory. Another stress reliever is to know where stuff is and to find it quick fast, you know? So track one is in this case subsequent. Do you really need to buy an expensive sequencer only to just do it like this? You don't have to. I've just did it because uh, I've got an OB6, I've got more synths and I just don't want to be um, fiddling about with changing the setup completely anytime I'm bringing in a synth. Literally one USB cable into the hub that's in the case, then I just can access it quick, fast. So stick it on the mixer, no problem. We'll get to the mixer in a second, by the way. Kick is here. What else have we got? There's a drum roll on two, which is not playing because the drum roll is over here. If you have to dive into a menu to access a drum roll, no, you don't want it. I tried mapping it from the Akai MPC-1, but I found that the MIDI mapping with a launch control XL on the Akai sometimes works and sometimes doesn't work. So again, a lot of stress if it doesn't work or all of a sudden there's ghosts in the machine and it's gone. So I want a hardware option, which means light switch style. On, off, on, off, that simple. So what you have is, boom, blah, boom. Cannot be any simpler, right? So on the left side, no volume. If you go to channel two, um, on the amp page here, it's on minus 61 now, minus 64, so it doesn't play anything. And then if I hit it and hold it, you see it light up and it's on plus 24, which means over on the B scene. Still only goes for the kick. Um, if I'm opening this up, you'll hear the snare, but you can hear that the kick is losing low information. So on the filter page, I've mapped the way that the low end of the filter is going to just like go up. So there is a high pass so that the highs can pass through. Pretty simple, right? Back in, boom. Now, um, once I will start a track, I'll probably start with some um, effect in the background. I wouldn't start with this, but I would start with something like one, two, three, four, five, six. Start with this. Open this up. We're hearing it. Yeah, of course. One, two, three, go. Bam. So this will just, you know, start with this. You I know. And every time it starts to just go. I'm building tension. If I want to get more sh sure of what I'm doing, I just want to build tension. So I'm just standing there and um, I'm pretty much um, uh, watching you being curious and I will get curious. So it's a, it's a joint uh, venture that we're on. So next up is I'm going to add uh, the kick drum then, you know? So I know like, from, and from the minute I'm adding the kick drum, I'm checking out how the crowd is responding to it. If it falls well, then I know, okay, I can build from that. So that's another thing done. There you go. Okay, cool. I'm starting to get my bearings here. Now this is music, this is drums. That is just like, um, um, well, you know, themes, leads, and this is something I can play live, but at the same time, I can sequence this as well. Now, what I've done on, on more ex ex extensive sets is I've copied this track around, and on certain of those tracks, on some of the tracks, I have already played stuff, so I can just easily play stuff. Easily. You know, there's delay on there, so there's two pedals over on this side, um, which is the uh, DG7 and the Blue Sky Scrymin, which I've got sent here on the send, they're both uh, connected to each other. But 
I can also use uh, effects in the um, octa track as well. Now, um, that's pretty much it. Now let's play something. And I filtered that sound. So again, building tension. It's all about building tension. Um, I want to be more in control of where everything is going. And I need to just give you a suggestion so I don't need to rush stuff on your brain because that just doesn't work, right? So from the minute you start to like feel like, oh, exciting, something's happening. So sometimes I will hint it, but what I have, kill that. I've got a theme that will easily bring you from one place to another place. Two, three, go. I can safely turn on track two, the snare, the claps on three. Boom, bam. On a different pattern, I'm playing a melody. Let's go to that different pattern here. I'll do it from the up for the octa now. So pretty much the program change will go in three. I'm 
going to turn off this B, which is on 7 right here. As you can hear, right on 5. So I'll play around with the different measures as well. Then you can play them. the bottom note.
Nice, turn us off. Sample playing from the Yoko track. Nice. Now those two are actually playing a song and dance and this one and that one are sitting next to each other. So again, muscle memory. Kick on one, clap or snare on two, then there's a hat or a clap on three that can switch with them, you know, with my big uh, sausage fingers, I can just hit with both of them. I don't know, that's going to happen. Hats on four always. In this case, I have a right on five. Usually I stick a sample and hold bit there, but I don't need it that much because I've got a sample sitting on seven. So five is going to be a ride. Six is going to be the through machine for the subsequent. And seven, you can hear it. So my track is built up pretty much of that. So then you got bam, 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 bam. An effect playing stereo over here. So I know where I am because in the grand scheme of things, you would like to have things line up, right? So. Six, seven, eight, two, three, effect. Bam, 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 bam. So then I know that I'm on this eight bar uh, thing that I'm doing, I know where I am, right? Cool. So, because um, just to try and stuff, it means you either have a one leg too many or uh, missing a leg and you don't want to be dancing when that's the case. Okay, so kick in here. Nice one. So building it up slowly. Bam, bam, bam. Now you know where everything sits. Now we can finally get to, okay, how can you make a convincing performance and feel good about it and el eliminate stress or anxiety? Like, ah, ah, because the thing what I felt when, I'm, when I've got an anxiety feeling, so sometimes I still get like these really crazy anxiety attacks or I'm not too sure. And my your mind can play a trick on you when you're not sure. It's basically a control thing. So obviously um, um, I do think that there are tricks to just get rid of it. At the same time, that's just the way uh, uh, it works for me. So I need to just find my confidence while I'm performing. So the few things that I'm doing is like, okay, I like this. This is already cool, yeah? Bam, bam, boom, bam. There's solid foundation, right? This I uh, determine in terms of what the, the, the artist for me is playing and knowing where I'm taking it when the artist after me appears. So I know exactly what it is that I want to do here. Right, so that's that's all cool, nice. Now that I know that, I think, okay, what can I introduce that is going to make a difference? You're dancing, you're dancing, quack, kick out. Now, hats, one, two, three, start, one. See, so I'm just gradually moving up. Knowing that five is the right symbol, I will only introduce that as a means of adrenaline. And then six is the first of the music, seven is the second of the music. Now, um, I could have, uh, I didn't do it today, but I made more tracks usually with the subsequent and then things will go there. I'll usually um, I'll also be stupid, but uh, if this is channel 16, I'll just go here to channel 16, physically track 16 and just make sure, that, oh, it's there. So it's out of the way. So the first 15 tracks I can use to have snare drums or a clap drum or whatever, or, or, or plugins that are coming from this machine. But you know what, you never, I'm never going to go past 13 or 14 with ingredients, so I'll keep it simple. Snare drums here. So if I want to make an impact already. Nice. You can hear that the kick is going away. Nice. Not introducing the snare yet. Now I'm going to start to introduce this sound with the kick off. Track seven. I'll go in, I'll see that it's there. Usually I will filter it down a little bit more. The only clear part is the hat here, right? So this sounds cool. This is going to fill the room. It's going to make you there. It's already loud. The high frequencies tend to be a little bit harsher to people. So make sure it's not too loud. But at the same time, you know, um, the highs is where, what you listen to and the bass is what you feel. So play around with that emotion in the club as well. Bam, turn. Now it's just making an impact. I don't know where you're listening to this. But uh, I can imagine uh, that if you're in a club sound system, this kick is going to kick you in the butt. And that's exactly what I want. Now, do, 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 nice. Now this is a sample, obviously, that I stuck on the Octatrack. For more control, I've played a similar kind of vibe with the subsequent 37. Let's go and switch that one. Snare drum, clap, two, three, four, boom, go. This is revealing a little bit more of where the music is going. If you've got musical ears, you, when you listen to this in, uh, by itself, naked, you think, oh, wouldn't it be nice if there's chords there? 
So this you would introduce after you would play your chords, obviously. But just to make sure that you know like what kind of ingredients will work, um, how can I feel a little bit more uh, uh, sure of myself, this is one thing that you could use. Then I would place the filter down. I would open up the filter immediately. So first is the music will invoke some sort of an expectation and then the filter will invoke a little bit more adrenaline on top of that expectation. So those are two things that you can do. Again, you know, so always think of, can I get multiple things out of the machines that I'm doing? Another thing I didn't mention is, if you're not sure at all, get uh, boxes that, that do their own thing. This black box, again, is being fed by my musicality. But if you are not that musical or you just want to make sure you just don't know what's happening, get a 303, get something with an onboard sequencer that you can launch as well and just have the kick uh, go and just like think on your next move while that thing is doing its own sort of like vibe. So you're going, ah, oh, I'm having a breather, you know? So 303 is always going to save the day and a lot of people love acid, you know? Uh, if you're not going to to constantly tweak that filter, people are actually going to forgive you for it. All right, um, yeah. That's the next one. And the bass line, since it's going to fill up that, that, that room with melody as well as adrenaline because of the thickness of where you can feel it, I'm going to take out the snare and make a small break, you know? So, and I try to just like, stick with four chord tracks as well, because those are manageable and uh, easy to follow, but at the same time invoke musicality as well. Okay, track seven. Do you know how I'm constantly feeling my eight bar sequence? So I got three lead lines actually. Don't think of it now. There's another one here. This one is that's the payoff. This I'm going to play way at the end when everybody's like gasping for air. That's when I'm going to play this. This is the, yeah, the payoff one. It's like the Rocky standing on top of the stairs, Bill Boa kind of, ah, I'm the king of the world. You know what I mean? That's the vibe that I'm playing there. Okay. Now, and everything can be masked into the darkness with the filter or can be in your face, right? Taking this off, building this up. If you mask it well, those strings are going to take over the two themes that are already playing. And that one, I just have to open it up for you to have it in your face. But for now, you're going to forget about it because this is dramatic, right? This is pure, uh, you know what I mean? Okay, bass line and kick in like so. And that's your next move. They still got more stuff to just add to it, you know? Um, then you can play your effects later. Um, and the whole thing is also longevity. How long can I extend your attention? Now, um, when I'm doing these videos, obviously I'm just trying to just like come up with the stuff as fast as I can. But when you see a performance, it's more of a natural kind of vibe. It's just not me talking to the camera, talking to you guys, but you're not here. So there's a difference in the way I'm doing it now as to what happens on stage. So whatever I say, uh, it can, it's the same thing, but it can go in a completely different order, uh, depending on where the night, day or event is going, right? I think I touched on everything right now. So um, this is my way of trying to just like feel a little bit more safe. Um, a thing that I didn't mention is that I will spend ample amounts of time sitting behind uh, either my computer or by behind my synths to, um, make to make sure that whatever I play is something that I want to perform with. It needs to be something that gives me goosebumps. Goosebumps is the best. Um, if you get goosebumps from whatever you're playing, you know you're on the right track. That should be that. Don't try and find more stuff that do that does that. If you got one thing that gives you that oh, feeling, you really feel good about it, then go run with that, you know? Uh, it doesn't really get any better by trying to just like uh, mimic it 50 million times on 50 million tracks within the same track. Just find that one thing and work with it. And then, you know, you'll find out like, oh yeah. So if you got like four or five of those and they're giving you goosebumps and you tried it out on most of your friends or whatever, um, you know now that it's probably going to work. So 
try it out, and then that should give you a little bit of an incentive to um, yeah, maybe uh, look at stuff differently. Um, I hope that this was very helpful. I think the other guy is going to tell you a lot more about the, on a Discord and Patreon thing. <sighs> Yeah, what's there to say, really? Um, even for me, to be honest, it's been very, um, very crazy for me to just like uh, finally come out and say it because I never said it before. I mean, a lot of people just think like when you're there and you bring a lot of equipment, you are uh, in control. So you know what it is that you're doing. Um, but most of the time um, you don't. You know what I mean? And that's with most things in life. This is what I came to find out later. I mean, my, uh, my uh, uh, better half uh, is a physician. She's a, she's a, she's a doctor. Um, and when people go to her, they go to her because they want to just like check out, like, listen, um, what is it uh, that I have? And can you solve this problem, that problem? But when she speaks to me, she's like, dude, you know, there's so many different options. I have to just try out this and this and this. I know what I'm doing because I study for it, but it's not like, this is this, the one sort of like trick that you have to do to just make it work. And I'm like, yeah, isn't it in every profession like that? You know, I mean, the fact that I'm standing there with a lot of equipment does not automatically mean I know 100% what I'm doing. Well, I know what I'm doing, but I'm still anxious about it, that it can go wrong or that I will ruin the club or the sound system where everybody will just like uh, jump ship and just, yeah, just you don't want to know what my brain tells me but from the minute. I'm not so sure about it. So I hope that the things that I showed you today uh, are little nuggets that you can implement on your uh, live performance, whether it be digitally or dollars. So it doesn't matter uh, as long um, as uh, you uh, try and feel comfortable. And another thing, if you at any point feel very uncomfortable in the situation that you are, don't be too proud to ask for help. There are people that can actually help you. So I do think that this video is also meant for that. It's meant to help you try and sort out what it is that, that you want to just like do, you know, just make sure that, um, yeah, just, just to reach out. If, 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 if you know what I mean, there's examples, uh, recent examples as well, I don't have to name any names, of um, people not reaching out and it can go very wrong. And it's all fun and laughs and performance and ah, oh, we're having such a good time. and. The, there's a lot of stress involved. You know, there's a lot of stress involved if you're having to perform for a lot of people and you want to do a great job. So, uh, and a lot of people take it a little bit too seriously, me included, so myself included. So, um, yeah, so I guess that that's that. Thank you for watching if you made it this far into the video. Now, the Mixer project, we're working on it still. We're ordering parts, we can get some. So we're talking about the, uh, uh, we're trying to get the faders and the um, uh, dual concentric knobs that I have for the filter section. Not so much the band EQ, but more a filter section high and low with the dual concentric knobs on them. That's where we are right now. We're ordering parts for that. Um, so that uh, prototype should be in the works. Yeah, ordering parts, that's where we are. So Christian Vossen, thank you also for helping me out with that thing. I just wanted to come out and say, yeah, thanks. All right, um, Patreon, that's another one. And yeah, hang on. This is it. I should have been more prepared. More prepared. Damn it. This is this is what happens when you do stuff on the fly. I'd like to welcome Dave Betnarovic as my new patron for not this last week, but um, thank you for uh, uh, yeah, enlisting on Patreon. Thank you for being there and thank you for um, yeah support. The fact with Patreon and Discord is that we talk shop, we talk modular stuff, we talk. Um, uh, you know, we'll talk since we'll talk uh, more since. No more since? Yeah, no more since. I'm showing off myself. Um, we're talking gear, we're talking travel, we're talking uh, the topic today, you know, being on stage, yes or no, performance, yes or no, well enough, not well enough. Um, we're helping each other, we're listening to demos. So, if you got some stuff, you can ask me questions if that's anything you want, you can get a little closer. We're making, we're making music. What about that? You know what I mean? So, um, another label manager involved. Um, welcome, my good friend, um, Khalil uh, Riai. 
He's uh, one of the residents at the Kitchen Club as well. And uh, yeah, man, we're just going to release records. So this is how we're going to do it. The first EP is going to be me and a little kitchen. Just like, I'm just going to throw out a few techno slammers. And uh, hopefully you guys can support the fact because we're trying to just like do that as well. And then the second one, I would like to make a compilation. I'm going to stick some music on there. Uh, I'm working together with Compass. Uh, I think that... Um, um, uh, Unico has got some cool to uh, uh, tracks as well, so I'm going to just like connect. Lockte did some cool tracks, so I'm trying to just like come up with maybe a four, four uh, track EP where I connect with uh, my patrons and we're going to release some stuff on vinyl. That's a cool thing. So yeah, that's another. So four tiers on Patreon. You're not breaking the bank. And um, yeah, you help me support, uh, keep this channel up. Thanks ever so much for watching. Um, the Kitchen Club, yeah, that's another thing. We are actually uh, performing. So I have Dave Mack playing. You know him from the Digitex videos. He's uh, performing. I've got Lucas D Sound as a patron of, uh, performing. Yellow Line, obviously, my right wing man uh, he's performing um, holy Thursdays flew out of London again he's gonna come and perform so that's gonna be a cool one and um, yeah uh, next week we're in Rotterdam yeah we're in worm worm that's another kitchen club so we're throwing them all over the place so if you want the kitchen club to go to a theater near you get in touch you know leave me a message um, I'm ready for you if you're ready, I think that somebody was saying uh, they want to have uh, us visit uh, Berlin. We're ready for that. So you know what, Kitchen Club. Um, yeah, I guess that's that. Now, thank you for watching. I guess I catch you next week. <laughs> you know where? On another video and a location. Ah! <laughs>